Yes, they are in the playoffs for the first time in three years with a 9-6 fun-filled evening at Fenway. They clinch it. Mo Vaughn with 200 hits. He had 207 in 1996 after his MVP season. Eckersley with some history. The Red Sox, second four-hit night for Scott Hattieberg. He led the charge, but Nomar carried him on their back. Let's go to the locker room right now where our John Holt is standing by with John Harrington. John? Butch, uh, thank you. Standing by with Red Sox CEO John Harrington. This is a fabulous moment for this franchise. I uh, know two ways about it, and you look uh, pretty thrilled right now. Well, we have to be thrilled. You know, it was a long six months, the, the true marathon, and anxiety all the way. So this is a great moment of joy, a little bit of relief. But we all know there's still work to do, and we have a commitment to be more productive in the postseason than we have before. So. We're holding back a little bit, so we'll, we'll enjoy it while we can for a few minutes and then get back to work. But uh, we've achieved one of our goals that we set out to make postseason, so we're very happy with that. But like anything else, our expectations are a little bit higher, and I'm sure our fans are. And uh, you can look in the faces of these guys here. Their commitment is to try to do better for the fans. And a lot of these players obviously have a soft spot for you. When you walked in, you got sprayed with champagne like uh, everybody yeah. else. Can you talk about that moment? Yeah, no, I have a soft spot for them too, you know, and we have to go through two to some difficult negotiations every winter but they know it's not personal and we try to treat them fairly and then they know where our heart is we all want to be winners and we want to be competitors and we want to be successful and so uh, they know our goals and objectives are all similar and that's why we can be compatible at times like this or most other times during the year when uh, we're not negotiating a contract and they're terrific guys aren't they we put together a band of people that are so competitive and we're almost happy to be uh, i want to say uh, looked upon as maybe underdogs to maybe sure. a texas or a cleveland where we're going to face because th these guys relish that they eat up the underdog status so uh, we're going to go on and i think we'll be successful next week john thank you we'll see you in the playoffs john Thanks so much. Thanks for all your support. Sure. Probably in Cleveland at the moment, Butch. A very joyous Red Sox locker room. Back to you. Yeah, probably in Cleveland, but Cleveland was losing it last check. And don't forget, Texas is still a possibility here. The Red Sox tomorrow night will be here on 68 Sports. But right now, let's go back to the locker room where our Paul Devlin is standing by with Brett Saberhagen. Paul, Brett. Hi, Butch. Thank you very much. The Red Sox will have plenty of postseason experience heading into Cleveland or Texas. Brett Saberhagen, this will be your fourth trip. How does this feel tonight? It feels very good. I think there's a lot of relief. Uh, we've, we've had uh, the wild card uh, race not really wrapped up, but we've had a lead for a long time, and it's dwindled down to, to hardly anything. And there's, there's a couple teams. I mean, at one time we thought it was Baltimore. The next time we turn around, we think it's Texas. The next time we turn around, we see it's Toronto. So uh, it just goes to show you that it's not easy to get the postseason. And, you know, a lot of teams made some good runs at us. We, uh, we finally got our act together and started playing good ball lately. And, uh, you know, it, uh, I think it's, it'll be a good relief and we can relax for a few days and, and uh, get our feet back underneath us. And, uh, get going in playoffs. How about the character of this team? The team was went through a lot this whole year. Just the character of the team. Well, it got a lot of heart. The guys play very hard. Uh, they don't give up. It doesn't matter what the score is. Uh, you know, everybody on the team. And, and you notice the games that we win are the games that everybody is contributing. You know, and we, we can't really count on Nomar every night. We can't count on Pedro every night. We can't count on Mo every night. We've got to have a team effort. And tonight, that's what it was. Everybody came out swinging the bats well. Pedro wasn't at his best tonight, but, uh, you know, he was able to get the job done for, for the majority of the game. And, you know, we come out victorious. But that's what it's going to take in postseason as well. We can't, we can't have one or two guys just uh, carrying the load. We've got to have everybody chipping in. The staff does have some experience with yourself, Tim Wakefield, Dennis Eckersley. How important will that be? heading into Tuesday night? Well, it, it's nice, but uh, I think the only only thing that we can really have guidance in is uh, is talking with the media and, and, the, and the hype that's going to go on. The main focus is, is just playing baseball. And, uh, you know, when you get out on the field, I think everything takes over. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of guys with a lot of butterflies going out there the first game. But once you step out on the field, it's baseball again. And, and I think everybody... Uh, Everybody will be looking for that, uh, you know, that first hit, that first pitch, and, and getting everything over and done with and just going and playing baseball. This team is 8-3 against Cleveland this year. Would you rather play those guys in the Texas? 
I think we, we've played Cleveland well. I think, uh, yeah, that's that's who I'd like to face. Not that, uh, you know, Texas is, is a better ball club, but uh, we've played well against them, and I think that's that's a good frame of mind going in. If, uh, if you play well against a team, uh, you have the confidence that you can go ahead and, uh, and beat them. And uh, it's going to be a sh short series, best three out of five. And, you know, we've, uh, we've pitched well against them, and hopefully uh, if it is Cleveland, we can continue to what we did during the regular season against them. Thanks, Brett. Congratulations on a great year. Thanks, Paul. All right, Butch, back to you. Thank you very much, Paul Devlin and Brett Saberhagen. Hey, I'm going to leave this one alone. Pedro starts game one, obviously, but Brett Saberhagen has been their best pitcher down the stretch, no doubt about it. So there's so many stories from the naked city, the naked locker room. They're not naked yet. They haven't taken showers. Let's go over to the locker room again, where John Holt is standing by with the manager. Jimmy Williams. John, Jimmy? The crazy scene in the Red Sox clubhouse continues. Here's the leader of the pack, uh, Jimmy Williams, who has been a little bit reluctant to talk about the playoffs, but it's a, it's a done deal now, Jimmy. Yeah, we're down to zero. It's a good feel, and these kids really played hard tonight. We uh, certainly scored a lot of runs, scored some big runs, and we got some key outs at, at different times. Certainly Pedro, I thought, pitched outstanding. He had a long inning in there, came back and got three outs, and then a little bit of a tough time the next thing. But uh, Swindell, Eckersley, and Gordon certainly pitched outstanding to uh, help us win that game tonight. But it's it's a great feeling for our club. It's, what, 159 games it took us to get here. They call us a wild card, but bottom line is we're a playoff team. We're one of four, so we're going to savor the moment. We're going to enjoy this. I mean, this is special. This is a very special feeling. We, we, we savor the moment, enjoy this tonight. When we get back here tomorrow, then we think about what we have to do ahead. During your two seasons in Boston, you're a character who's been marked by humility, but clearly Jimmy Williams deserves at least some of the credit for what happened this season. Are you willing to accept some of that? You've done a fantastic job. Well, well thank you, but you know, I look at uh, I look at what our coaching staff has done. These guys are relentless as far as their work ethic and our training staff, Jimmy Rowe, and, the rest of that staff there, the time put in, you talk about what Rich Zawacki has meant to Brett Saberhagen. But uh, I give the credit to these kids. They're, they're a unit, they're a group, and they, they've played very good together. But we really haven't had too many peaks and valleys. We've been pretty darn consistent all year long. But I think it's a credit to them and their mentality and the way they go out and play on a daily basis. So we're in it together. We're all trying to do our little bit. I probably do less than anybody, but I'm enjoying it, having fun watching them. Well, finally, Jimmy, you've always told us you just play the next game on the schedule, but if you had your preference, would you rather face a Cleveland, which you've had a much success against this season at 8-3, and three, or a Texas team in the first round? But see, when you start, see, you throw all that out the window, and you start out 0-0, that doesn't even really enter into it. Uh, certainly, you have to win games during the course of a season to get to this point whatever your record is against certain teams. But once they get there, they've gotten there because of a reason to. And uh, you get to that, that level, you start off 0-0 in your best of five series. It doesn't matter what your record was before. Jimmy, congratulations. All right, thank you very much. And it all starts again next Tuesday, Sox versus either the Indians or the Rangers. Back to you, Butch. Thank you very much, John. Very well done, and you are absolutely right, John Hall. Jimmy Williams deserves a lot of credit. And you know who else deserves a lot of credit, even though he didn't pitch the way he wanted to tonight? Pedro Martinez, and he's standing by with our Paul Devlin right now. Paul, Pedro? Thank you very much, Butch. Last year at this time, Pedro was headed for the offseason. Now he's going to the postseason. And Pedro, you looking forward to that first star in the postseason? Of course. Uh, uh, yeah, we have the celebration now. We have everything. We, we have the happy faces, but tomorrow it's work time. And we have to... Um, try to correct the little things that we didn't do right uh, now in, in the, at the end of the season um, so that we can go forward to the next ones and uh, that will be the playoffs. How do you feel going into the uh, first game on Tuesday? I feel great. I, I'm actually healthy. I'm, I'm very strong. I feel really strong and uh, I have everything there. I'm just missing a little bit with some of the pitches and uh, I'll correct that during the week and uh, hopefully I'll be better for the next outing. Do you have a preference on who you like to face, Cleveland or Texas? I don't know. I, I think I'll take anybody right now. Just going to the playoffs is enough to, to pump me up and, and get my adrenaline going. So um, I'm just really excited that we're going to make it and, uh, and that we're going to be there and anything could happen. How about the atmosphere and the character of this team? Obviously, they went through a lot this whole year, and now you're going to the playoffs. Talk about that a little bit. Well, the atmosphere have always been the same. A, a team that never give up, a team that's always competing, a team that wants to win. And uh, we brought that from spring training. I saw that in the first moment we were together, and um, we have kept it. Somehow we kept it, and uh, we, we still have it. And I think we're going to take that 
same attitude to the to the playoffs. All right, Pedro Martinez, thank you very much. You're welcome. Pedro Martinez, 19 and seven, starting on Tuesday. Back to you, Butch. All right, John, uh, Paul, thank you very much. A lot going on in that locker room, a lot going on in the studio. Welcome back to 68 Sports Night. The Red Sox are in the playoffs with a 9-6 win. They win their 90th game of the season tonight against the Baltimore Orioles. You know, Dan Duquette takes a lot of hits in this town. Tonight, tonight, to give him some credit. He's standing by with our John Holt. John, what I want to know is, ask him where he got that pump up the jam move. <laughs> yeah, this is the Duke's night. He was raising the roof, right? We saw you raising the roof. You had a lot of fun when they clinched it. Well, it is a great achievement for the team, but I think everybody had a lot of fun this year, and it's great to finally clinch it and move on to the next step. A lot of people didn't want to give this team credit uh, in the preseason and spring training, but again, uh, Dan Duquette, like he did in 95, with the other members of management, crafted a ball club that uh, got a playoff spot. Well, this is a pretty good ball club. You got the three good starters at the front of the rotation. They had great years, Martinez and Wakefield and Saberhagen. And thank God for Tom Gordon. I mean, this guy's fantastic. Uh, we, we got great contributions from everybody. Uh, we got the, the two big hitters in the middle of the lineup and Vaughn and Garcia Parra, and we've had good defense all year. You know, we had that problem at second base, but everybody stepped in to do their job. Sadler did a good job. Maloney did a good job. Benjamin did a great job. Uh, in the outfield, people didn't think there was going to be a lot of production from them, but these guys, not only could they play defense, but they showed that they could hit. Tomorrow, I know you have some meetings as you begin to look towards the postseason. Will that be the plan for tomorrow, try to firm up a roster, at least for the uh, divisional series? Well, exactly. Um, you know, we've got a couple decisions to make, but tonight we're going to enjoy the celebration. Uh, these guys did a great job all year. Jimmy Williams did a great job getting everybody to play, and... Uh, you know, it's just a lot of fun tonight for Red Sox fans. We had, what, Gordon sets a major league record. We had uh, Eckersley, <laughs> Ty Ann Hoyt, Wilhelm. We had Mo Vaughn in the hit derby. We got Garcia Parra putting up MVP numbers. We got Pedro Martinez on the mound. It was a great night. Butch, that's uh, Dan Duquette, and that's a lot of smiles for, what, a two-and-a-half-minute interview. Back to you. Thank you very much, John. Congratulations, Dan Duquette and the Boston Red Sox. Congratulations. Second time Dan Duquette in the playoffs with this team, 1995, and now 1998. The Red Sox are in. Now, I remind you, I remind you, the playoff roster is when they can be set. The Red Sox have a lot of moves they can make because of guys on the disabled list. We'll have some more detail about that tomorrow and before we get to the playoffs next week. Let's go back to the locker room once more, where Paul Devlin is standing by with another hero, Scott Hattieberg. All right, thank you very much, Butch. Well, it has been a total team effort the f this entire year. Tonight, no different. Scott Hatterberg, four for four on the night, and this has to be pretty sweet for you. Oh, incredibly sweet. You know, we, you know, it's a team that uh, has overcome a lot of obstacles, uh, exceeded a lot of expectations, and and uh, we came out on top, and it's really sweet. So uh, it, was, it was a good night for us. Coming out of spring training, not many people gave you guys a chance to go to the playoffs, so that has to make it extra sweet. Extra special. I mean, uh, they, they said a lot of things about a lot of people that uh, we weren't, we weren't going to live up to a lot of things, and uh, they picked us to be pretty low. And, and it's, I think it really defines the team. Uh, you know, it shows that uh, we get a lot of heart and a lot of guys that uh, wanted to prove some people wrong, and I think we did. So it's, uh, I think that makes it extra sweet. Any preference, Texas or Cleveland? I don't think it matters. You know, I, I, I think that we're, uh, we're hitting a spot where we're, we're rolling a little bit. We got a lot of confidence going, and, you know, whoever it is, I think we're going to be a tough, uh, tough opponent. Second four hit game of your career, uh, just in the groove tonight. Yeah, I was in the groove. I had a bit of a horseshoe in me. I, you know, I was a little lucky on a couple hits, but uh, you know, I had one big one, and you know, it, it was pretty big for us. But Nomi had a couple big hits, and I, like you said, it was a team effort for us. It has been all year. Uh, we got some great pitching. Flash closed it out, and it was just a great team effort. What kind of stuff did Pedro have tonight? Obviously, he made a few mistakes on the home run ball, but overall, what kind of stuff did he have? Yeah, he had pretty good stuff. You know, I think the cold weather uh, is a little tough on him with some of his finesse pitches, but, uh, you know, he made a few mistakes, and they're a good hitting team, and they, they capitalized on him. But for the, mo for the most part, you know, he threw really good. It's a good hitting team, you know, and he did a, he did a good job of keeping us in the ball game. We scored some runs and then uh, gave it to the bullpen. They shut us down like they have all year, so it was great. Okay, Scott, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. All right, Butch, big night for Scott, big night for the Red Sox. Back to you. It certainly was, Paul. The Red Sox win, as I said again, if you're just tuning in, the Sox are in the playoffs. Let's go back to the locker room. 
some history made tonight. Paul Devlin is standing by with Dennis Eckersley in a great emotional night for everybody, including the X. Paul, Dennis. All right, Bush, thank you very much. Big night for the Red Sox, big night for Dennis Eckersley. He ties Hoyt Wilhelm's all-time mark for appearance, 1,070. And what does that mark mean to you, Dennis? Well, this year especially, I mean, I didn't think I was going to make it a couple of months ago. I didn't think it was going to work anymore. But, uh, when it, you know, I was anticipating it. And of all nights to do it, you know, tonight was special, you know. And I even gave up a home run so Flash could get a save. Yeah, it's close. But, uh, <laughs> Cal was a hitter too. You know that and that's special. Somebody had told me that Cal said something about uh, uh, it was special for him to be able to be the batter when I was doing. You know when the record was whatever, and he was there, and that's kind of nice. I'll always remember that. Twenty years ago on the anniversary, you guys come back and you're going to the postseason. How much does it mean to be a Red Sox going to postseason? Well, I know how much it means to the fans. You know, again, I've been living here since '78, so. Uh, um, I've got a lot at stake. I mean, I really do, but I could feel for the fans, and uh, we've got a shot, you know. I know everybody's going to be like, oh, I don't know, I don't want to get too excited, but uh, listen, the other team has to show up. You know, it doesn't matter. You just throw your stats out there, and then you win. And I've been on the other side of it, but we're supposed to kill everybody, and we got killed, so uh, I know what that's about. You've been on both sides in the postseason, and this pitching staff has a lot of experience in terms of the postseason yourself. Um, Saberhagen, as well as Wakefield. How important is that going into the postseason on Tuesday? Well, that's as important as you want it to be. You know, I mean, just because you've done that doesn't really mean you're, uh, anything either. I mean, you've got to show up again. You know, I mean, I used to be afraid of the guys that uh, didn't do anything all year long and they step up to the plate and they make up for their whole year and won at bat or something. So, uh, you know, we got to have our big boys step up to the plate and, and Pedro to get off and, and, uh, and we got a shot. Okay, Dennis, thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you. All right, Dennis Eckersley, back to you, Butch. All right, Paul Eck, nice job there by Dennis Eckersley tonight with that appearance, tying Hoyt Wilhelm, as Paul told you, for the most appearances ever by any pitcher in the history of baseball. That's a pretty significant record, and Dennis uh, pretty emotional about the fact that Cal Ripken was at bat. Latest update from Seattle. The Texas Rangers, with Aaron Seeley on the mound, lead Seattle by a score of 5-1. to one. The Cleveland Indians have lost. There is one game separating those two teams now, if Texas should win. Now keep that in mind, with three more games to go for the weekend. Cleveland playing Minnesota, Texas playing Seattle. If Cleveland falters and Texas jumps ahead, it is not the Cleveland Indians that the Boston Red Sox will play in the playoffs come Tuesday. It is the Texas Rangers. Should they tie the Texas Rangers would have the better record and play the Red Sox because they beat Cleveland 7 out of 11 games this year. Keep that in mind. John Holt, back to the locker room now, standing by with one of our favorites, Darren Bragg. John, Darren? Well, Butch, we're standing by with one of the emotional leaders of this ball club, and tonight was a gigantic night for emotions. It continues here in the clubhouse. How do you feel personally? Uh, it's, you know, great to wrap it up, you know, tonight with uh, Pedro on the mound and, you know, Flash coming in like it's been all year. So it's really nice to get this thing over with. As you look ahead to the playoffs, it'll start uh, on Tuesday. It's just around the corner. Do you have a preference as, <laughs> as you get pinched from behind? Jason Veritek, the... Uh, uh, the culprit behind you. Do you like Cleveland or Texas in the playoffs? Um, any, you know, if you make it to the postseason, you got a good ball club. Every team that's there has got a great ball club. Um, you know, you got to play one game at a time and, and and just play hard. What does it mean to this ball club? Uh, this team didn't get a lot of credit coming out of spring training. I know it's been a team where a lot of guys have overachieved and had fantastic seasons. As you talk to your teammates and celebrate, do you get the sense this this means a heck of a lot to these guys because of the expectations or low expectations? Definitely. I think, you know, when you look in this clubhouse, you look at all the guys, you got a lot of winners on this team. You got a lot of guys that don't like to lose. And uh, I think that's what kept us going all year. No one likes to lose. And, you know, and we came back a lot of times to win ball games, and that's what this club's all about. Never quit. Darren, thanks. All right, man. Sox win tonight. Next stop, the playoffs, Butch. Thank you very much, John. One of our favorites, Darren Bragg. Our John Holt is busy. You just heard him say, back to you, Butch. Well, let's go back to John again, because John's standing by with Tom Gordon. 42 consecutive saves, 45 on the year. What a season for Flash. What a moment over at Fenway. What a night, John. Yeah, fantastic. I just ran across the uh, clubhouse to join Tom Gordon, who was gracious enough to uh, be with us. Uh, you were a record setter tonight. This team clinched a playoff berth. Uh, just a million and one good things. A million and one good things. Thank God everything worked out well for our team. And, uh, Kind of go back to spring training where you think about the time that we put in, the, the, the effort that all this has, has taken, and whatever it takes for us to be in this position. You know, I think the guys have really worked hard, and everything's uh, been a plus for the city of Boston and the team, the organization. Uh, uh, this, is a good, this is a great time. 
What did it feel like for you, uh, Tom Gordon, that, that last out with the crowd on its feet, uh, expecting the clinching out and that uh, you were on the field to make it? What was going through your veins at that point? You know what, I, I think about the important things, which is just staying focused, staying uh, positive, and staying under control every day. You know, Kerrigan has been a great help to me. Eck has been a great help to me. My teammates have been outstanding. Everything that have, that have happened for me this year, I could not have done without them. And, uh, you know, the, the organization has, has been a plus for me. Just being here and, and enjoying every moment of this is, is very positive. And, you know, I'm very excited right now because I'm happy and I'm excited. This is the first, very first time I've ever been in the playoffs. And, uh, Knowing that I got a chance to go there is, is something special. You went to the All-Star game, and we spoke with you out there. You were as excited as a little kid to be at the All-Star game. How does the uh, playoffs measure up at Cleveland or maybe Texas next week? I tell you what, you know, I was, I was at the playoffs, and, uh, and I said, if the playoffs, I was at the All-Star game. If the playoffs are anything like the All-Star game, it's something special. So, you know, it, I'm really looking forward to this. So, you know, it's a blessing, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of everything that's happened for this team and, and just be with these guys. These guys have been great. And everything that's happened for me, you know, my family's been outstanding. And it just couldn't be a better time. Flash, thanks so much. We'll see you in the playoffs. Hey, thanks for having me. And that is the record-setting Flash Gordon Butch. John, we'll see you in the playoffs. You're gearing up for the playoffs yourself, aren't you? You got it. We're going to uh, give complete coverage of the playoffs on a 68 Sports as we uh, follow this team to Cleveland or Texas. And uh, we will have simulcast games. If ESPN is the cable carrier of the games, you can catch them right on 68 Sports. We'll have uh, pregame shows, Red Sox on deck. So 68 Sports is the place to be. Butch. John, uh, before we uh, take it back there, I want to ask you a couple questions. Sure. Give us the feeling in the locker room because there's, tomorrow there's lots of questions, whether it's Texas, whether it's Cleveland, you know, how Pedro will pitch, considering he's not pitched well down the stretch. But tonight's a celebration laboratory night baseball's a long season I would imagine that's the prevailing attitude feeling in this locker room tonight is a night to celebrate yeah certainly I mean it's it's a night to enjoy and look back on this season when there were so many comeback wins and there were some ups and downs but this is a team again that overachieved that not many gave credit uh, in the preseason to do much of anything but they had guys step up Darren Lewis Mike Benjamin uh, Flash Gordon making the conversion to the bullpen so there are a number of heroes Butch no two ways about it I got a million and one questions about the locker room. I know Joe, Joe Carkin's a <laughs> yeah, guy that probably put up all the uh, polyethylene and everything else. I know you're getting bumped around. Tell us something being there, John, that we might not see or that's something that struck you when this all came down when you first walked into that locker room tonight. Well, first of all, these guys were calling for Nomar Garcia Parr and Mo Vaughn to come out. They wanted to get uh, those two foremost with the champagne. They were a little later. They were on the field uh, doing some interviews immediately after the game. So they wanted those guys to be involved. John Harrington got sprayed. Everybody was a part of this. It was just a team feeling. It's, you know, certainly during the year, things come up, but tonight it's all about teamwork and how it's paid off. John, have you got any champagne on your jacket there? <laughs> no, it's pretty clean. Really? I've managed to escape so far. I'm well, be unless the guys hear this, I might be in trouble. I'm going to be disappointed if some clothes aren't ruined by you and Paul <laughs> Devlin. I'll over do there. my best. Have you smoked a cigar yet tonight? No, not yet either. We'll do, we'll do that after we go off the I air. Want a, I want you to bring us a cigar back, okay? You got it, Butch. All right, John. Nice job tonight, both you and Paul Devlin.